Hello, Hill Diver. Today I want to cover five loadouts that might help you in your solo dives with difficulty 7 and above in Hill Divers 2. Not only are these loadouts amazing for solo dives, but they also work great in a group setting, no matter the size of your squad. I have given all five loadouts names, because why not? Not only have I tested these loadouts, it's actually the loadouts I prefer to use for both solo and group play in Hill Divers. So if you're struggling in deciding what to pick, struggling in combating battle titans, or just want to hear my opinion on different loadouts and stratagems, then keep on watching. So before we start, let's set some ground rules. First of all, you need to be able to handle everything that the game throws at you. So we need to make the loadout a jack of all trades. Before we head into the stratagem, let's talk about the armor, perks, weapons and grenades. For the armor, I highly recommend that you run lightweight armors. This is to get enough speed so you'll be able to outrun all enemies you'll find in the game. This will make you able to kite the terminates whenever you get overrun and make you able to get some breathing room so you can call in stratagems without getting jumped by a hunter or slammed by a charger. The armors I recommend is either the SC37 Legionnaire or the Trailblazer. Legionnaire armor is only available in the store, whereas the Trailblazer can be unlocked in the free progression tree. Until you'll be able to get one of these, you can also just stick to the default cadet's attire. The default cadet's attire has slightly less speed rating, but still gives you enough for you to be able to outrun the terminates. But to cut it short, any lightweight armor works, since the most important is the speed. The perks is up to you. Personally, I prefer the Legionnaire armor due to its increase in throw distance. For the weapons, we have some different options depending on your preference and how far you are into the game's unlocks. Let me just highlight the weapons I recommend. As a fresh cadet, I recommend that you stick with the default assault rifle until you can unlock the Defender SMG. From here, you'll need to move towards the Breaker Shotgun, which is the weapon that has the highest damage per second in the game. If you however prefer a more slow firing weapon that'll deliver more punch per shot and also has a higher penetration force, then you should work your way towards the slugger. Where the slugger will struggle through is in close combat due to its slow rate of fire and slow reload animations. Now let's talk about the warband weapons. First we have my favorite, the newly added LAS-16 Sickle. This weapon doesn't have any recoil since it's a laser weapon, and if you learn to handle the heat from it, you'll never run out of ammunition. Another strong candidate for the Terminates is the new Blitzer. Slow firing, but will easily put lesser and medium-sized Terminates to the ground. Thus require you to be close to your targets through, but has unlimited ammunition since it's an arc-based weapon. Only downside with it is it doesn't do any damage to neither the charges or the Bile Titans. Now let's talk about the grenades. Your grenade has one primary job, and that is to close the glory holes that spawns the terminates. But sometimes you'll find yourself with a support weapon that can fulfill that role and therefore you do also have some options for something like the stun grenade. Stun grenade specifically can be useful since it can stun anything, even vile titans. What I recommend for the solo divers, however, is going to be the incendiary grenades, impact nades, or just a standard cadence frag grenade. If you go with the impact grenades though, be careful when you use them at the glory holes because they have a chance of blowing up in your face. The grenades that is, not the glory holes. For the boosters, there's one must have the way I see it, and that's the stamina enhancer. You need every bit of speed you can muster so you can get yourself out of harm's way whenever you're about to be overrun. I see little use in the restock booster since you got all the supply calls in all for yourself. If you haven't unlocked the Stamina Enhancer yet, then stick to the Vitality Booster until you can get yourself the Stamina Enhancer. Now, let's get into the stratagems and what defines these loadouts. There are some stratagems that will be within all my loadouts, and that's going to be the Eagle 500kg and the Alter Cannon. The Alter Cannon can be replaced with something else like Eagle Cluster or Air Strike if you do not like using the turrets, or if you don't have the ship modules unlocked for the turrets yet. And if you are currently unlocking your ship modules, then I highly recommend you start unlocking everything for the Eagles first. The first loadout I will start with is going to be based around the Ark Thrower, so I decided to name it the Ark Angel. My pick for this loadout goes as follows. Ark Thrower, Eagle 500kg, Orbital Rail Cannon, 
auto cannon sentry. The arc throw might just be the strongest support weapon in the game right now since it can damage anything. It's very fast as doing a map clear and it can quickly take down a charger plus it doesn't require a very high skill level to be used properly. There is one trick though with it that separates the cadet from the helldiver and that comes down to how you shoot with it. The first shot should be a fully charged shot but from here just start rapid firing the gun only charging up to like 50%. The follow-up shots you'll do after the fully charged shot will still do the same damage as a fully charged shot. When it comes to aiming the weapon, try to aim slightly above the enemy since that'll decrease the chance of the arc thrower just hitting the ground in front of you or hitting a corpse in between you and your target. When it comes to prioritizing the target you want to aim towards, always go for the biggest target because the arcs are going to spread out from that target to the lesser terminates. The Eagle 500 KG might just be the most versatile stratagem in the game because it can deal with anything. It's amazing for engagements when it comes to taking down a big nest or simply just clear out a huge wave of terminates. The 500 KG is also your most reliable stratagem when it comes to dealing with the Bile Titans. And talking about the Bile Titans, I'll go a bit more into that later on in the video and share a little trick that'll make you able to always hit your 500 KGs on the Bile Titans. Orbital Rail Use this if there's multiple charges or save it for use on a Battle Titan. It will not kill a Battle Titan, but if you follow up with the Arc Thrower after an Orbital Raid Cannon, you'll be able to kill the Battle Titan fast with just sapping it a couple of times with the Arc Thrower. The Auto Cannon deals with anything as long as you place it correctly and you work on protecting it. It can take down charges very fast and it can even deal with Battle Titans. The Auto Cannon also makes a great area of defense that you can retreat to if things get too heated. Just cut the terminates back to the cannon and watch the terminates turn into flying minced meat. Second loadout, eat me. Eat 17, Eagle 500 kg, Eagle cluster of raw backpack, auto cannon. The eat is now considered being one of the meta weapons when it comes to taking care of the charges and battle titans because it's extremely versatile, low on cooldown, quick on call in and always comes in with a set of two. Whenever you're about to start an objective, or engage on a nest, call down some eat so they'll stand ready for whenever a big target spawns, just aim for the hit and pop it. Should you find another support weapon on the map, then just use it and call in the eat whenever you need to take care of a big target. After spending the eat, just pick up the support weapon you used again. The eat is also very handy at closing the glory holes from a distance or taking out the spores routes. In combination with the eat, I recommend the Eagle 500 kg, the auto cannon turret, and Eagle Cluster or the Guard Dog Roar Backpack. You don't need Orbital Rail with the Eat, since the Eat will take care of those targets now, that being the Charters or the Battle Titans. And talking about the Charters and the Battle Titans, just aim for the head and fire off the missile. Before we move on, let me talk a little bit about the Eagle Cluster and where I see it having its strongest usage. The Eagle Cluster will destroy any lesser terminates and most medium-sized. Where the cluster really shows its value is when it's thrown into a bug breach since it'll quickly take care of most of the enemies that'll appear from the orange cloud. Let me also elaborate on the guard dog rower. The rower is great for dealing with lesser enemies and especially the hunters. It will also greatly aid you when it comes to running from the enemies since it'll keep on blasting the terminates while you are on the move. In addition, it'll also do its best to cover all your flanks while taking in me to do a well-placed headshot with the E-17. Third loadout, Laser Lieutenant. Laser Cannon, Eagle 500 kg, Orbital Laser, Auto Cannon Turret. The laser can be great at dealing with lesser and medium enemies, but will struggle with heavier enemies. And that's why I picked the Orbital Laser. The hard-held Laser Cannon can deal with a single charger by beaming the rear of its legs but if multiple should spawn at the same time or bile titan, then you'll spend most of your time just running and that's where the orbital laser comes to play. It's great for taking out the multiple enemies at the same time and it'll always prioritize the biggest enemy on the map. The only downside about the orbital laser is it only has three charges per map mission. Talking about the biggest enemies on the map, let me give you some quick tips on dealing with the Bile Titan and how you can make this monstrosity into an easy foe. First off, shoots its belly and throat. Then it can't spit anymore and will always try to stomp you. Whenever the Bile Titan does a stomp, not only can it kill you, but it'll also kill all terminates it's you stomp upon. If you got an Eagle 500 KG ready, 
wait for it to get close, then drop your 500 kg eagle in front of it, since the Bile Titan will go into an attack mode, where it will stay stationary until its attack animation is complete. This will give you enough time for your eagle to drop and therefore guarantee that it will always hit. If your eagle 500 kg is on cooldown, then throw down an auto cannon as far away as you can, and it will quickly take care of the Bile Titan for you. Fourth loadout, Comrade Cannoneer. Auto cannon weapon, Eagle 500 kg, auto cannon turret, eagle cluster, or guard dog rover. The auto cannon doesn't do as much damage per shot nor armor pin as the auto cannon turret, but is still very powerful in a proper hill diver's arsenal. It can deal damage to all enemies on the battlefield, but don't try to take out a battle titan with it. As of the charges, we are currently able to take out the charger by shooting it in the rear of its legs. Though Arrowhead Studios have stated that this is not intended, so this strategy should be removed eventually. When that becomes the case, aim for the rump of the charger, destroy it, and it'll bleed out by itself and be crippled, so it should be really easy to kite. Fifth loadout, Railing Ranger. Railgun, Eagle 500 kg, Auto Cannon Turret, Guard Dog Rover, or Shield Generator Backpack. After recent nerfs, the railgun is now most likely the most advanced weapon to use. To make any use of it, you'll have to switch it to unsafe mode, overcharge the weapon, and release the trigger at the right time before it'll explode in your hands. If you manage to do all this correctly through, you'll be able to spread democracy with one of the most powerful tools in the game. By using the unsafe mode and overcharging it, you can kill charges in 3 headshots or 3 to 4 leg shots. Plus, it's amazing for taking out all medium sized enemies. For the battle titans, I'd rather still just use the method explained earlier in the video. However, yes, you can kill it with a railgun. To kill the battle titan with a railgun, you'll have to hit a very small weak point that is located on the side of its head. For the rest of the stratagems, I'm once again bringing the 500 kg eagle, the auto cannon to it, and for the last stratagem slot, I suggest taking either the rover again or shield generator backpack. The shield generator can come in clutch here when dealing with the charges, since it'll take your three well placed shot to take out the charges. There will be moments where the charger will die so close to you that its corpse will roll over you, and this is where the shield backpack will save your bones from breaking. So which one is my favorite, you might wonder? Personally, I love using the arc thrower since it makes the game feel such a breeze. If I go into group plays however, I tend to lean towards either the eat loadout or the railgun, since I feel like I'm bringing more to the table with these specific loadouts. I hope this video will help you in your future dives and in deciding what to bring for you. And if you agree or disagree with any of it, let me know in the comments. My name is Simon, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Goodbye.